a soul to Christ, then what happens is that heaven, there is, there is a, a, a response, heaven response. And the response in heaven is that there is more joy. So all of us will, I, I think that we will, we will be dimly esteemed if heaven is overjoyed because of our response to the call of action. But the thing is, we are not taking that initiative. We are not making that approach. We are not taking advantage of the opportunities. All right? So it says that heaven will respond more joy than even the 99 of us. So we always come together, we edify ourselves, which is going to happen, which is what is happening through these training stages. We are edifying ourselves. We are fortifying ourselves. We are building ourselves up, right? Some of us will leave the teaching and like, yeah, I really want to do this. I really want to go. But if you don't uh, take the initiative, if you don't make the move, you realize that that fire that has been kindled up, that has been lighting in you, will die down again. But let's keep this as a key text for tonight. That I tell you in the same way that there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner. Over one sinner. All right? So from time that you and I were, were born, how many people have you been able to win for Christ? Right? So keep that in, in mind. How many souls do you have? One for Christ, right? Now, the next thing is a quote. While I was preparing for the presentation, um, you know, in, re in reading the scripture, uh, reading some articles and, and making some, some researches here and there, I, I chanced on this quote. And it says that you may never lead someone to Christ. However, you may be the one that plants the seed of the gospel in their hearts for another to water. Right? So it could be that in our lifetime, we would not be privileged to have that opportunity to lead someone to Christ. For that person to come into acceptance and say, I am ready. However, that does not mean that our efforts will not be recognized or our efforts will be in vain. No. As we are going out there, we don't expect that automatically, automatically, that anybody we come across that we share uh, our faith with should automatically accept Jesus. And that will be we deceiving ourselves. We are praying that the Lord of harvest will give us, you know, a good harvest. However, the fact that we are making the move, the fact that we are going, you will share someone, you will share the gospel with somebody. At that point in time, it will not really touch the person. It will not really sink in, right? The person is probably in a hurry. The person is, an, is in, in some situation. You don't know. There are a lot of people that we are going to be strangers to them, right? They don't know us anywhere. We haven't encountered them anywhere. And all of a sudden, you approach them. You share the gospel. You don't know probably what has happened the previous week, the week that they are in, that very day, what is happening with them. So some people would not even be respect, uh, receptive of the word, right? However, when someone opens up and says, okay, what do you have for me? You probably will be that person that will be planting that seed in them. So I want us to all understand that we have a role to play. So as we go out there, you don't have to be very eloquent. You don't have to be somebody who knows the Bible cover to cover. No. However, you simply have to 
do your best, share the gospel the way you know how, and we are praying that the Spirit of God will plant the gospel in them. Someone might also encounter them and they will build upon what you have sown in them. It is even possible that some of you, through you, someone has been saved. However, you did not necessarily lead them to Christ. All right, so everybody needs to be on board. All right, everyone is on board. Now, let's dive into the main focus point here is five essentials that I want to focus on as far as the preparation stages are concerned. Some of them we've already touched on, so I'm not going to dwell so much on that. However, we cannot eliminate them because of the topic is how to prepare, right? So in the preparation stages, right, there is a saying that if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. Knowing the scripture only is not enough. Praying only is not enough. There needs to be a preparatory stage, right? So you, you plan from step one, step two, step three. The first that I want to touch on is what I have put there as pray, study, listen. There are different kinds of people who will come across. These are their categories. There are people that know nothing about God, as we talked about last week, right? There are people that know nothing about God when Pastor Killer was making his presentation. So we don't want to go out there assuming that Anybody we come across already knows God. There are a group of people that also know God. But at some point in time, something happened in their life and they made a decision not to follow the faith anymore. So they are very knowledgeable. As I move on, we will we'll know how to deal with such people. There are also people that are emotionally disstable. I mean, unstable. What that means is that they are in a state where if they are able to get the message and the message sinks into their spirit, then it, they will be able to allow themselves, they'll be able to avail themselves and they will be receptive to what we are offering. There are others also who, due to their emotional instability, would not want to have anything. The reason being is that they start questioning themselves that, why, if there is a God, why would this happen to me? There are people that were uh, brought up from a religious home. However, as they grow, they form associations and those associations kind of takes away, right? The faith that was instilled in them. So there are several people who come across. We cannot define exactly who will come in contact with. So to be able to bring all of those people in submissive to what you say, right? There is, there is this that we've shared before, that before you start talking to the God of people, uh, the, the people of God, you have to first talk to the God of the people, right? So we go to God in prayer. We seek the face of God in prayer. Now, as you pray, you have to be conscious that the... Prayer points that you lay out. This is not the time you pray about all other things. This is the time where you specifically, even as you pray to prepare yourself, you also pray for the souls 
that you are going to preach to. For the people that you are going to preach to. Right? You pray that whatever that they are going through, the Lord will be able to come to their aid and help them. You pray for the geographical location. Right? There is some there is something that I've said before, which probably most of us already are aware. For every uh, territory, there is a spirit that, you know, has been given charge over that territory, right? So we have territorial spirits. They have been given mandate to control that space. So you are going to that domain. You are going to that territory. And you are sending the gospel to go and draw people, you know, uh, um, from, from the realms of darkness or from the shackles of bondage and bringing them to the light. You, you have to first, right? It's like what scripture says. You cannot go to a strong man's house without first defeating the strong man. So you have to bring all of these ones under the captivity of the Holy Spirit. So it is the church's responsibility to send out its people for the proclamation of the gospel and for the gathering of the rest of God's people. This is the church's mission on earth. Now, this isn't part of what we do. However, this is the objective of everything we do. If it is your objective, then what it means is that you and I, as we are going through this training, then what it means is that there needs to be that sense of urgency. And one of the ways that we are able to prepare ourselves is by walking closely and intimately with Jesus, right? Walking closely and intimately with Jesus, right? The more we see him, the more we know him, the more we be like him. One of the powerful means of evangelism, means of evangelism is how you live your life, how you show forth your life, how you practice Christianity. It's not about even sharing the gospel, right? So we, before we go out there, before we start doing all the things that will follow suit, we cannot go out there deceiving ourselves. We first, because there will not be any power behind it. Really, there will not be any power attached to it. You study scripture, study scripture, and you go out there. There's really no power behind it. So until we set ourselves right, you and I both, and we, we make a conscious effort to walk closely and intimately with Jesus, then we will not have that impact out there. Two, you are not going, and this is something that apostles had mentioned, right? And Paul specifically mentions that it is not about the eloquency of speech. It is not about how much uh, grammar you can speak, right? If we go back into, um, you know, our African society or back to Ghana, there are people that have won souls for, for, for Christ and they were not learned people. One of the key things is that we need to be responsive to the Holy Spirit. So as we are learning all of these things, you also try to learn how you are going to be responsive, very high alert, right? To listen to the Holy Spirit because it is the Holy Spirit that is going to be able to teach us. And by teaching us, then we can be able to go teach others. Let's take a practical example. The apostles, the day that the church was birthed, right? The day that the church was birthed, the New Testament. When the apostles were gathered and the Holy Spirit came and the new church was birthed, 3,000 people were saved. 
3,000. After 3,000, then 5,000, and then the entire city. After the Holy Spirit had come. So we cannot go out there and leave the Holy Spirit behind. We will not be able to have any harvest. The next thing is we need to engage in faith-filled and frequent prayer, right? Faith-filled and frequent prayer. Frequent in the sense that we need to constantly, as we are praying to build ourselves in the faith, we are also praying for those that we will go out to win for God. Then immerse yourself in the Bible and follow what it teaches. Immerse yourself in the Bible. Do not let this book of the Lord depart from your mouth. Immerse yourself in it. One of the difficult things and the most challenging things, we'll, we'll learn how to navigate it, is when you go out there and as you start sharing the faith, they start throwing questions at you. Left, right, center. And that is what some of us or believers we fear might happen. I want to state this, that accept that you don't know it all. And you don't have to know it all. If you, if you go out there thinking that you have all the answers, you will, you'll, be, you, you'll be in a lot of trouble. If you go out there thinking you have answers to everything, it is okay to say that maybe when a question comes, you have practiced as best as you can. But when someone asks you your question, you don't want to misrepresent scripture. So if you don't know, right, politely make them aware that I don't have the answer for that question at this right moment, but I will be more than uh, happy to connect with you back with an answer. That even gives you an opportunity for a follow-up. And this is if you are by yourself, if you are with a team, that is why we're going to plan it to where we have a team uh, of two or three. If you are with a team, see if a member within the group can be able to help that individual with an answer. But the key thing is immerse yourself, study the Bible. Now, we don't want to study the whole Bible and go preach it. That is not the point. And this will be um, a leeway into the next essential thing is the message. You have prayed. You have studied. You have listened to the Holy Spirit. As we are all going out there, our plan is to go out there with a message. We need to have a plan. You don't go present something different. I don't go present something different. So we're going to have a key text. Right? And we're going to have some core scriptures. That doesn't mean that you are, you, are, you are limited or you are boxed within that. No. However, we need to have a focus. The reason being is that we don't want people going to engage in conversations or topics that is not related. That would take away from the, the message. So as you see, my number one point there is that we need to make Jesus Christ the center of the message. That is the central focus. So when you go there and someone start bringing in, oh, what do you, what, what are your thoughts about, you know, the abortion rights? What are your thoughts about this? What are your thoughts about that? It is going to, you might not have enough time to, to, to be with a person. That is not the time for you to go tell them, Oh, it is good or it is bad. No. Right? Try every means possible. If the person brings up abortion, right? 
you have to find a means. So let's say the person engages me. I'm presenting the message, right? So I start, I, I try to strike a conversation. We're going to be out there. We don't know anybody, right? So I see someone passing by. And depend on the weather, depend on what they are wearing, depend on what they are holding, you can use to strike um, or start a conversation. Hey, that's a nice outfit. Where can I get one? P people oftentimes will, will, be, will feel a little bit more comfortable sharing with you or a little bit more you know, receptive because you have complimented what they are wearing, right? So, hey, I like what you're wearing. It looks good on you. And it's, oh, thank you. We're like, um, so where can I get it? By the way, my name is David. Uh, what's your name? Right? Then you, you start the conversation. Now, maybe as you go into it um, and the person says, uh, but what do you think about abortion? Right? Now, you might be forced to make your opinion at that point in time. However, we want to caution all of us that we don't want to have that take away from the message. All right? So if the person asks me about abortion, I'll probably say, oh, I would love to engage with you more about the topic, right? Um, however, I know you really don't have a lot of time. Um, some people are stubborn. They want to stay on topic. So they'll say, oh, I have, I have all day. And I'll say, okay, how about we strike a deal? How about um, you give me a few you know, minutes of your time? Let me share with you about this, you know, Jesus. Do you, do you happen to know him? Uh -uh. Right? Don't make it too obvious that you are disregarding uh, or discarding the topic that they are bringing in. However, we have a focus. We have a plan. Our plan is to present Jesus, not forcefully, right? Not forcefully. We are not going out there, going to memorize a speech and going to say, speak the speech, uh, present the speech. No, that, that's not the point, right? Um, we are going out there as real people, not people that have memorized scriptures and written down uh, speeches and all of that. We are just going to engage people but we want to be that, doing that by the leadings of the Holy Spirit. So everything that we want to do is that we want to present Jesus, make Jesus the central focus, right? So in, in the blurb I put here, I said that evangelistic preaching is the proclamation of the gospel in the power of the Holy Spirit with the aim of making disciples, right? Now, that is our aim. Discipleship is a long-term objective because before someone gets discipled, the, the person needs to be converted first, right? Conversion, right? You convert them and as they carry on with the scripture, follow the doctrines, then they are transformed into discipleship however we are not out there to go make them disciples like right there and then the thing about we going out there also is that we want to stay with scripture we don't want to stay we don't want to go out there with quotes we don't want to go out there with opinions we don't want to go out there with what you think as soon as you comes in, so as you prepare, get the scriptures down right. I would say for the scriptures, as we prepare, let's memorize the scriptures that we want to use, right? Memorize the scriptures. If you need to refer to most of us who have our, you know, our Bible apps, which we can easily, uh, if you cannot quote it, of course, know the, the scripture so that you can pull it up, right? To buttress whatever point that you might be sharing with the person. And always you want to try as much as you can 
to leave the person with a scripture, right? So as you are wrapping up, you probably will give them, oh, I see you probably don't have enough time and you have a lot going on. So how about me leave this with you? Um, give them the scripture, right? However, do not go share your opinion. Do not go share what you have heard somewhere. Focus on the scripture. Use the scripture. And keep it simple. Keep it very, very simple. At best, someone might at best maybe give you five minutes of their time. Ten minutes at most. Right? As we prepare, depending on a lot of things that will be happening. Weather, time, uh, the demographic, where we find ourselves, whatever is happening within the, the, the space we find ourselves. So keep it simple. Don't go give exegesis of the, the, the scripture, right? Don't go now break it down and no. All we are going out there is that Jesus came to die to save us from sin, right? Jesus is the savior. And let's show empathy right i think i'll bring it in the in the in the leading in the in the ones that will follow here let us be very empathetic as we share the gospel all right so you keep it simple and also keep it to the point right keep it to the point the point is that you are proclaiming jesus keep it to the point then the last one I put there is highlight grace rather than judgment. If you are very, if you are very judgmental, this will not be the time as we go out there to share the message. The message of the gospel is not a judgmental one. The message of the gospel is that Jesus Christ, while we were yet sinners, he came and died for us right? He was gracious enough to us that he came. So in that same spirit of empathy, we want to share that same grace with them. So maybe something like this. There are some people that as you share the message, they get broken down and they might even say it. Some might be thinking it that I don't think Jesus will forgive me. I don't think that um, he will be able to love me. Right? Then that is where you bring in your story a little bit in. And you also use maybe a scripture. Right? Probably so for all I've sinned. To include me. We all have sinned at some point in time. Right? However, by the grace and the mercies of God. And by Jesus coming to die on the cross of Calvary, he has been able to save me. And I'm in this position to share the gospel with you. It doesn't matter what you have done in the past or even now or yesterday, right? He's in the saving business. He loves you just as he loves me. I am no better than you, right? So you don't want to rate yourself higher than them. Keep a mutual ground. Let them know that you understand them. However, by doing all of this, you are keeping to the message. Proclaiming Christ in every word that comes out of your mouth. The next thing is the people. You're already talking about them already. People. As we are going out there, we are going to meet, like I've already said when I started, you know, various, you know, groups of people with various demographics. Now, because we want to be very practical, we plan to be in Maryland here, College Park, Hyattsville, uh, Bowie, Right. As we go about this business. Right. Um, maybe Burtonsville, 
su uh, Silver Spring, uh, uh, Lanham, wherever we find ourselves. We could easily, and it's something I'm doing on the side, we can easily know the dem demographics of the people based on the area we are going to. Are there more black people than white people? Now, we need to be very informed. We need to be aware of these things because the way you present the message, we don't need to be perfect. We're just learning it. We need to be aware. The way... um. Let's say uh, uh, one culture will, will will accept their word or will be approachable. Will, will might not be diff, will, might not be the same as another culture would do. The way a particular town or a particular group of people, maybe age wise, or uh, their demographics, maybe you know the culture, the race, uh, the age. Um, based on their interests. There are a lot of things that falls in place. We, we as we are going out there, you can't just go out there like that. We, we want to be well informed about the target audience because we are going out there to speak to a sect of people. Right? So one thing that I plan to do with the team is that and I think I've mentioned it in the next one. We are going to do a reconnaissance. So the spots that we plan to go, we don't want to, we don't want it to be the first, the first time that we are on that spot or that area or that location will be the day we are going to do the evangelism. No. Right? We don't want that to, to, to happen. So we are going to do a reconnaissance just to survey, right? To see how the place is, where we can station ourselves, right? How people go to and fro. And it's easy for you to sometimes even do it with uh, Google, Google Maps, because sometimes it gives you the traffic when people are, you know, at that spot most of the times within the days. These are things that can play to our advantage, right? So we need to be one, we need to be aware of the demographic. In that area, are there a lot of older folks? If you are going to a college, we know, or at least we can gauge that a higher percentage will be, you know, within the youthful uh, age right? Young adults, we can get people within that scope. Now, the reason why it is important, when I go out there and I let's say I go to a college uh, campus, the way I will interact with them, I need to interact with them based on, to start a conversation, based on what interests them, based on what they are informed about, Right, that way I can be able to pull them in. They will feel like, oh, we are, we find a common ground. Right, we find a common ground. You also don't want to go speak. Uh, I came across the word uh, Christianese. Basically, you don't want to go now talking about maybe the Great Commission, talking about the body of Christ, talking about omniscient, omni. Uh, potent, some of these things are, you know, yes, basic English words, but not everybody really understands that. So we need to know the audience and need to be able to present it in a very simple way based on the audience that we are targeting. Right? Also, culture. If I find, if we find ourselves in a highly dense Black community, our approach needs to be different, right? The message does not change. The strategy changes. When you find yourself in a dense uh, white neighborhood, the approach changes. Why? Because these different 
class or group of people are from are, are trained differently, are brought up differently. And there is something that I put in there is that be a student of culture. We need to know how they act. We need to know how they will respond to some of these things. We don't want to be a critic of culture, right? We don't want to be a critic of culture. I'll give you an example. We go out there. We know that in our, in our um, African community, right? Most of us are Ghanaians. We used not to see men or, or boys with, you know, ear, earrings or earpiece. Um, not exactly sure how they call them. Or braiding their hair, right? Most of us, it was a culture uh, culture shock when we when we got here. However, when you go out there and you see someone, irrespective of your belief, that is not the time, right? That is not the time. There is um, an article that I came across and someone uh, was sharing a testimony or it was giving an instance in his life when something happened. So he was with a group of people, right? Friends, the person is a believer. They were with a group of people and they found themselves just walking past um, a nightclub where a lot of people were gathered. They were basically passing by. And there was this preacher. The preacher has a megaphone. And as they were walking by, the, the, the preacher was basically yelling and screaming at them that, you are sinners. You're going to hell. Like basically, you know, um, speaking on top of his voice. The preacher is doing the right thing. But that would try throw a lot of people off. Right? Even though the message you have is good. However, the way you go about it. Right, the way you go about it, and all of these things we don't expect, myself included, to be perfect at these things. The Holy Spirit will direct us, however, we don't want to bring our personality in there to limit what the Holy Spirit would want to do. So, we need to be students of culture, not a critic of them. When the person comes. Oh, that's a nice, you know, earpiece you have there. And I don't know because, again, lack of information for, for, I don't know the different kinds and types they have. So if it strikes me that I'm, I'm going to maybe a community where I will see a lot of people with those type of things, then I can quickly research. What are the different types of earpieces they have and what words do they use? That way I can try to start a conversation because the one of the best things that will play into our advantage is when you are able to start a conversation and they welcome it. If not, you try to start a conversation and it doesn't work, they are off, they are going. That opportunity is lost, right? The other thing, talk with, not at your audience. Talk with the audience. If someone now engages you, right, you want to talk with them. Talking with them means that pause and also listen, right? Pause and also listen. Don't just go about talking, 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 right? It will be good. But probably as you keep talking, they are probably all, all over the place. Engage them. You don't have enough time. Make it simple. However, make sure that you are engaging your audience. And I've already talked about empathy, communicating with empathy, right? Because you don't know what the person is going through, right? You don't know. There are a lot of people you could see on their faces, right? Um, there is something very scary with humans. Someone might be putting up a smiley face, but we don't know what the person is going through, right? So you will, you will come across people where when you share the message and they, they break down and they, they start sharing, sharing tears, 
you might at some point come across those people. And people are a little bit, I don't know to the extent, volatile, right? When they get to that stage. And that is where you hit them with the word, even as you embrace them. Also, be fully present, right? Be fully present. It is a real story. It is a real life. As I said earlier, right? Like I put over there, be fully present. Have a pickup line um, if you if you want to, uh, but don't memorize a, spree, a, a speech, right? So maybe starting off, just start off simple with a pickup line. Try it, one or two. It works. It doesn't work. Change it. When I say a pickup line, I'm just talking about something that will help you start a conversation, right? The person is passing by. You see the person having a coffee. Hey, um, where did you get it? Is there a Starbucks close by? Where can I, um, you know, go get one for myself? The person will probably stop and try to give you a direction and all of that, right? Now, you, might, you probably will not always see someone with a coffee. The weather might be nice. The person is going, hey, is it nice weather, isn't it? Right? It, trust me, it might not always work. But you try to, um, uh, what do you call it? Change it if it doesn't work. Use a different method if it doesn't work. Right? Now, there are people that when they have some when they when they find that you share the same interest right you share the same interest i see um uh especially maybe when you go out and maybe that week let's say for example that week is uh um what is it the american football the final what is it called here um can anyone help me you know when they have that that major final uh football game super bowl right the super bowl right now let's say it is that week of super bowl okay and you go to a campus you are you have a higher chance that let's say i am with maybe um jennifer right we are on campus. Our mission there is to go share the gospel. We find a, a, a select group of boys or girls um, hanging out. And it's the week of the Super Bowl. We know the two teams that are playing. We can strike a plan. Jennifer will be uh, one team, I one team. Then as we are trying to pass by, right, we maybe pass there and we just engage them. Hey. You guys are gonna watch the Super Bowl um this weekend. This um lady right here is a fan of, but I think this team is gonna beat them. Like anyone on my side, you know, something. Find something that will give them a common ground. Because it may be now, let's say a different scenario. We are super um, you know. We are in high spirits. <laughs> we want to go share the gospel and just get it done and out of the way. And you just go there and start asking, hey, do you know Jesus? Have you accepted Jesus? Do you have Jesus in your life? Do you go to church? Are you a Christian? That doesn't work out, right? It doesn't always work out. So when you find a common ground, find what they're interest, interested in, then you can take it from there. Um, as far as the audience, the target audience um, is concerned, right? The target audience is concerned. Now, place and location, because we are looking at how to prepare. We need to look at all of these uh, aspects of it. We look at the, the we already talked about, um, you know, the, the spiritual side of things. Prayer, study, listen. We talked about the message. You are going out there with a message, right? You need to know the message. Need, know the body of the message. Keep the message simple. Stay on course. 
and lift Jesus up in the message. Make him the center of it and then share the word with grace and empathy. As you prepare, we are preparing to go meet people. Know that the people we are going to meet out there, right? Know them. You can know them as in knowing them um, by name, by where they come from and all of that, but just a general overview of the de demographic of that area. And then now the place. We pick a place. There are, diff there are factors that we need to consider when we are picking a place, right? So for what we plan to do is that we want to go to um, College Park Shopping Center as our first stop for our first. We just want to go test the waters and see. So uh, next week, Saturday, plan is to be out there, right? During the time that we plan to go to just go survey, see how people go in and out, right? See how the traffic is like. Over there, we have um, a chain of stores over there. We have Shoppers, Best Buy, Home Depot. Um, there are other stores over there. I am very cognizant of the fact that um, it's getting colder. So one thing that I've done is I've looked up the weather to see what is the weather like for that 25th that we plan to go out there. No, let's say we pick a day. And we did not carefully, you know, consider um, the weather as we prepare. And we go out there and it's pouring. Please tell me, who are we going to share the gospel with? Nobody. Nobody, right? So these are things that in order to make sure that it is effective, we need to be aware of these things as we prepare. Uh, prepare. Now, I say these things because um, some of them needs to be handled by the leadership. However, there, are, there will be a time that you will be led by the Holy Spirit to go out there and do it all by yourself, right? You need to be aware. So, what I have here for place or location is that if you want to get out and share your message with as many receptive people as possible, let them come to you. It is easier if they come to you. Coming to you means that you position yourself, right? At a high traffic area where people are moving back and forth or where people have converged. Okay, where people have converged. Now, where people have converged, even with that, you need to apply wisdom. Not everywhere that people have converged that you need to go share the gospel. You need to be safety conscious. The fact that you are sharing the gospel does not mean that you should risk uh, your life or you should not be safe. Right? You should be safety conscious. Very important. So high traffic areas, good for evangelism, might include downtown business districts, right? Of course, they, they never sleep. Street fairs, farmers markets, college campuses, right? Um, hospitals, you can, you can liaise with them. And I, I'm glad we even have um, one of our brothers has given us... Um, you know, something so that we can team up with the hospital. I I, I like that. We'll, we'll consider that for next, for um, one of our events coming up, right? So these are high traffic areas that you need to take advantage of or we need to be aware of. And for each of these areas, we need to know what is happening, right? We need to be aware of what is happening. Then we need to follow any solicitation laws or instructions from business and that's and property owners. As we are going out there, we need to be well aware of the laws. In our country, the, the country we find ourselves in, there are laws that 
protects freedom of speech, right? Protects religion. You need to know the parameters of it. Most people don't tend to share their faith, like street evangelism or uh, you know public evangelism, if you if you want to call it, uh, because we've seen many cases where police will, will will come and drive you away, or there are people engage with you and all of that. We see them, right? If if you if you you see some of these things on the on the news or YouTube and all of that, right? So what I took upon myself is to go look it up a little bit more about um, some of them. So let me quickly come here. What does the United States law say about, um, let me here, say about sharing your faith in public, right? So what does this country country's law say. So below is a short legal analysis prepared by American Center for Law and uh, Justice. Um, attorneys on the topic, right, on the topic of sharing faith in, in public. And uh, it gives us a more in-depth legal analysis um, elsewhere, but I didn't want to attach it, all of that here. It says that the streets and sidewalks of the United States are an open forum for evangelism. Right, because it is a federal property, it is open. It is not um, owned by any particular person. So no one can limit and restrict you unless you are going to places where it has been strictly defined that, hey, nothing of this sort needs to happen here, right? Besides that, the streets and sidewalks of the United States are an open forum for evangelism. The Constitution guarantees the right to preach the gospel. Right? It guarantees the right to preach the gospel in public places. The Supreme Court's many cases involving preaching or other speech activities on the streets provide ready answers to those who challenge your right to give away religious tracts, pamphlets, and other printed material and to speak with people on the street about your faith. So we have a law that is protecting us as we do that. So we don't need to be afraid, right? We just need to be aware of the laws governing solicitation. If someone says, no, I don't want it, that's it. You don't force the person. You don't pursue the person because of where we find ourselves. What laws protect my right to witness and share my faith in public? When you give away religious tracts in public places, streets, sidewalks, and parks, you are engaged in a form of speech and publication protected by the United States Constitution and civil rights laws. When you speak with someone about the gospel while in a public place, you enjoy constitutional protection, right? The fact that you are here legally, you are, you are protected by the constitution to share your faith. As American citizens, we are protected by the United States Constitution from government interference with our rights of free speech. This includes the right to evangelize. Also, the constitutions of every state in our country include, so including Maryland, it includes guarantees of free speech, which are at least as protective of free speech as the federal constitution, right? So... Let's not be troubled uh, and uh, let's, not, let's not be afraid of going out there. If we want to do it publicly, right, let's not be afraid. However, we need to be aware of these things. So that is why I put it in, in my presentation that um, we need to follow any solicitation laws or instructions from business 
and property owners. If we find ourselves at someone's shop and they ask us to leave, we need to respect that, right? Because that is their shop. Do a reconnaissance of the desired spot. I've talked about that. Be informed about the weather and be always aware of your environment. So as you are even out there sharing the gospel, we need to always be aware. You need to be cognizant of what is happening around you, right? We've seen in some instances that because people don't always uh, uh, um, like what you were doing, right? Uh, sometimes they go too far, right? Where they go too far. So you need to be very much aware. If you find that the place is getting a little bit um, rowdy or tensed, leave that place, right? Leave that place. You don't want to go engage in any argument. That is not our focus. And um, finally, the logistics that we need. Go out there with your Bible. Right, have your Bible in hand. Could be your Bible app, right? If you have your uh, printed out Bible, right, go out there with it. Time, right? The reason why I put time here, as that scripture helps us to understand, it says that we should make the most, right? When you read the uh, NIV, make the most of every opportunity, right? So the time is now right? Time is an essential commodity. So as you and I don't make the move, we are just wasting out that time, just wasting out those opportunities, right? And I also said practice. So there's a personal logistics to you. Practice, right? And I added there literally, practice it. Practice how you will start an, uh, a conversation. Practice, right? Practice how you will quote that scripture. Practice where you will put it in. You are not doing necessarily uh, like saying it uh, uh, um, verbatim. I'm talking about, like we talked about, write a speech and go spill all out. No. But there are key things you need to practice. Practice as we say, right? Some people don't um, <laughs> entirely accept that. But as we say, practice makes perfect, right? But you practice, you get better, right? You practice, you practice, you practice. And in the, in, in the spirit of practicing, we have human resource, right? Use your family and friends. Use them um, um, as, as, as a tool to sharpen your, you know, your evangelism uh, skills, right? And if, the, if your friend does not know God, voila, that gives you an opportunity to start some some sort of conversation because as we have said the most effective type of evangelism is the personal evangelism if you have some gospel tracts you want to go out there and share by all means placards but our focus is not on the placard our focus a, a lot of people um in, in the world that we have we are disconnected Right. If you study carefully what is happening around us, we are disconnected. So we want to, we want to quickly. Oh, did I stop sharing? Someone said I stopped sharing. Can you see my screen? Yes, you're good. Yes. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah. So, you know, if you have a gospel tract, placard, have it there. But because we are in a world where Day in day out, we are we are disconnecting from each other because of social media, because of technology and all of that, right? Some people just want to have a conversation too. Some people want to have a relationship, right? Um, so, so some people are not so much receptive to strangers, but they are receptive to friends because there's there's that relationship there. All right. So all that we are doing is not only because we are going out, but the most effective one. Is the person you see every day, right? The person you and I see every day. But the thing is that sometimes fear strikes our heart and we are afraid. Not that we don't know it. Not that we cannot do it, but we are afraid. 
And that is what the enemy continues to hammer on, on us. Oh, you can't do it. If you go and they ask you, what will you say? Right? You don't even know how to quote this scripture. Right? If you look at your life. So, so it, it kind of keep beating that in us. But like we have said, you don't need to be perfect. Um, one of the things that I will plan to do is have a connect card. Now, I know most of the connect cards, it has your, um, like your spouse name, your email. And no, we wanted, we would create our own connect card. The reason being is that there are some people that when you share it with them, you see that they are receptive. They will probably want to connect back, right? And um, and maybe continue the conversation, right? Not not a lot, but you you will get some people. We want to make sure we are taking advantage of it. So you have a connect card, maybe has um you know uh, the, the 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 name of the church. It has a contact information and it has a scripture on the back. You just hand it out because some people would not like to give you their number. So why don't you give yours to them, right? So simple, right? Give it to them as they go with the word that you have given to them. When it strikes them, when the Holy Spirit start beating it down in their spirit, they will reach out, right? And when they reach out, you take it from there. Um, I believe that is all that I have here. If anyone has questions, Please feel free to ask. Amen. Questions. Anybody? Hold on, you mentioned earlier in your presentation that we have different groups and um we mentioned that we have the novice people who know nothing about the word and those that are knowledgeable and um, those that are in bondage um is there any specific strategy that we are going to use or we'll send the same message to all of them Yes. Yeah, so as we start off, right now, you see that maybe based on, let's say, for example, some of our folks have not done this before, right? Let me stop share here so I can see my screen. Some of our folks have not done this before, so it'll be new to them. Okay. So for those of us that have done it before, for those of us that maybe know a little bit more, we don't know it all, but a little bit more, right? Um, regardless, we want to keep it simple. Keep the message simple. Now, the thing about those that, let's say, for example, those that uh, know scripture or at a point in time, they have studied scripture, they would want to challenge you. They would want to argue with you. You don't want to give them that platform. Your message is that you are preaching Christ. We stick with the message. If they try to sway us into uh, deep conversations that would uh, uh, take away from what we are trying to present, no. So my advice will be that let's keep our message simple. If the person is a novice, present it to them. However, make sure when you start talking to them, you will know. Make sure that you don't uh, present so much that beats what they can assimilate, you know, in the terms of the words you use and all of that and how you go about it. Keep it really simple. And even with those people, maybe just get one, only one scripture, right? And how would you know? Of course, when you start talking with them, you 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 can be able to uh, try to deduce, to see, oh, these people, they, they know about this, they know about that. Um, just keep it one scripture. Now, if the person is someone who, knows a scripture, you will see it, right? Um, the, you, you, there's, the, what do you call it? The one, they are gestures, the facial expression, the words that they will use, their responses can kind of lead you, right? Will give you a hint that, okay, these people, they know it. 
they might just want to kind of uh, challenge you and all of that. But at the end of the day, we want to keep our message really simple. We are not going out there to preach a full sermon. We are only going out there with the gospel. So let's keep that very simple. And it's not that's that would not be the place for us to do a debate. Did that help? Right. Um, anyone else? Yes, and let me quickly ask a question, just trying to piggyback on what Uncle Yoram was asking. Mm -hmm. Like you said, some of us have not done it before, and you said some of us have also done it before. And this particular question that Uncle Yoram is asking, it's going to come up. Mm -hmm. Whether we want it or not, it's going to come up. Sometimes with some of the people, it might be easy to work your way around it and head back to the topic. Some people especially for those like you said who know a little bit of scripture you it, it might be very difficult to get around it like an example when we went to the camp meeting uh, myself and Ajua we were walking to our hotel room after one sermon we met a gentleman at the entrance that we tried to you know share the gospel with turns out this guy has read the bible from genesis to revelation a few times like he knows the scripture like you're reading a book and knowing it not understanding based on what the holy spirit has given and he's come to the conclusion that god doesn't love some people god loves some people and doesn't love people why would he kill some people for certain sins and send others to go out and fight wars and kill people so because of that he 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 doesn't want anything to to do with a God who loves some people and doesn't love others, right? We try to work our way around it. And I must say it was tough because he was able to quote certain scriptures. We had some other ladies from a different church who came and found us talking about Jesus and they joined in the conversation. So some of these things might happen. You are talking to somebody, you find yourself going down with, a certain conversation that he didn't intend to. And then the person will also call somebody else. Oh, can you come here, come here, come and listen. Listen, to, you know what I mean? So it keeps going and going and going. They don't have five minutes, like you said, to listen to the message about Jesus that you want to tell them. Oh, but they have an hour to argue with you about certain topics. So what, in your opinion, what am I trying to ask it? What is a simple, practical way that we can handle this when it comes up? Thank you. So I think that, like I said, one of the things is before we, we go out there, we need to be armed, right? Practice makes perfect. And our message is very simple, is that when we are going out there with the gospel, proclaiming the good news, and in the quest of sharing the gospel, someone approaches and the person is really hell-bent on having that conversation. And that is one of the, uh, I think I had said it earlier, that um, maybe, of course, you find a name. Let's say, for example, Rita. Like, hey, Rita, I, you know, I, I'm curious why you asked that question. And I think that it's a very um, important question or topic that we need to, we need to treat, right? Um, I do believe that some of these things, to better understand it, right, um, how about we consider this? And then if we do have enough time, I might be able to, we might be able to talk about this. That is one instance. Someone might understand, someone might not. No, 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 I, I really want to know what, what your opinion is, right? Now, another instance, if that doesn't happen to, to work out, because the thing is you will not have one way that would work out because of people, um, um, their character, their nature, there are people that would just, okay, let, oh, yeah, yeah, sure, 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 my bad. And then, you know, this place, they'll, they'll say that, oh, sure, 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 my bad. Um, so what, what, what were you saying, right? There are other people that will still want to stay on the topic, right? Let's say, oh, why does God uh, uh, allow, you know, wars or people to die and all of that, right? Now, keep the message simple by God is ever loving, right? 
I understand that you are probably have certain experiences in life that have made you um, arrive at this conclusion. However, I want to submit with you with all humility that the God that I'm presenting is not as you see him as. He is very loving to the point where he took the form of man and came and died for us, right? Now, I'm not necessarily saying that all of these things, when you say them verbatim, will do it. However, try every possible means. If you do it and the person is still hell-bent, then you have to have, what do you call it? Um, um, uh, an, you have to find an exit, right? You have to find an exit. Um, because as you, the person tries to engage you for so long, there are other souls that are going away, right? You might think that, oh, I really want to win this person, but the person is really trying to sway you, take you on a different uh, trajectory. So in order to cut that conversation politely, hey, Rita, I really do appreciate the conversation that we are trying to start here. Um, I really believe that if um, we are able to do this some other time, um, I'll give you this scripture. I'll give you this contact. Feel free to reach reach out to me, right? I'll be more than welcome to talk uh, at length with you about this, right? You don't want to just rubbish them. You don't want to just cut them to make, to make it appear as if their question is irrelevant or you are just kind of trying to do away with them. Acknowledge their question, acknowledge their interest, and also give them, like offer it to them, right? Offer it to them that, oh, I would definitely love to have this because I cannot use five minutes to help you understand. I will really not be doing um, justice to the question, but I would be more than welcome we can plan and pick a date and time, and then we'll have that conversation. God bless you. Do you mind if I pray for you? You pray for the person, and then you move on to um, another person who is more going to be more receptive um, for the message. Uh, did that help? It definitely did. God bless you. 